All right guys, Papa Pepper back once again. Today we're doing Keep It or Kick It, where we evaluate some different snake species we found on our land and in the area recently. And I was gonna go through this with the children anyway with my little peppers. So I thought, you know what, why not make a fun video? We'll see how much they know to begin with and then we will uh, share some new things hopefully with some of you and stuff for you guys to think about as you encounter or potentially encounter various wild snakes in your area or on your property. So the first species we have is this beautiful little ringneck snake. Very, very cool. And a ringneck snake is one that we had back up in Wisconsin, uh, but I never found it. Down here, they're one of the most common little snakes we find. So they've got a, a nice olive kind of color. They're a smaller snake. They've got a ring around their neck that's um, kind of white or off-white or sometimes even orangish. And then on the belly, they've got a beautiful belly that starts out with a white throat, heads down with some pale, um, orange color and then to a bright orange tail that they'll sometimes curl up as a uh, defense mechanism. So is this a snake we should keep on our property or should we kick it off our property? Keep it or kick it? Keep it. Keep it? Why would we keep it? Because it can't really do any harm to our animals or our land and it would it can eat some of the bugs that would get our garden. That's right. So these guys a lot of times they'll eat um, worms um, smaller creatures, maybe small salamanders and stuff, but they'll also eat slugs, which are a common garden pest. And uh, there are some snakes that eat insects too. These guys kind of not predominantly eating insects, but they can also get a little bit bigger in this and they will even eat other snakes. So this is one that we will be keeping, the ringneck snake. So the second species we have right now is this beautiful red-bellied snake. On the top, it's kind of drab. It's brown, it's got a couple different colors, but on the belly, it is absolutely amazing. And this one, I believe, is a gravid female. So the red-bellied snake is a small snake, one of our favorites to find back up north, and uh, we find fewer of them here, but we do find some. So Monster Truck just found this one recently, and it looks like a gravid female, which means it's going to be giving a live birth soon. Uh, I was talking to a friend about that, and he says, I thought, uh, I thought only uh, poisonous snakes gave a uh, live birth. And I said, well, that reminds me of that time when you thought wrong. Um, and of course, venomous snakes is what he actually meant, not poisonous. But uh, these guys do give live birth. They lay a little like tic-tac looking membrane that the babies come out of rather than eggs. So with a snake like this, what do you think? Should we keep it or should we kick it off our property? Keep it or kick it? Keep it. Keep it. Why would we keep a snake like this on our property? Because they eat bugs. And how much harm can these pose to our animals? Not that much. Yeah, how much harm can they pose to our family? Not that much. Not that much. Careful because she's pregnant, okay? So these guys, um, they also eat earthworms, but they're big slug eaters. And a cool thing too is they're big snail eaters. So we have land snails here that'll come attack the garden, just like the slugs. And these guys can actually get the snails out of their shells because a, a snail shell would be difficult for them to digest, but they can get the snails right out of the shells. So I don't know, we might let this one hang out and see if we can find a um, find her when she has her little babies. And see if you guys can show you some of that too. I've got some uh, footage from years ago back up in Wisconsin, perhaps I'll insert quickly. But red-bellied snake, another keeper, huh? So our third species today 
is going to be a representative of the garter snake and ribbon snake kinds. Um, there's a lot of different snakes that are going to be this nice black with the yellow racing stripes. Maybe they'll have some red, maybe they'll have some orange on them. Hold on, bugger. But this is a garter snake. A very common snake. They can get, you know, up to three feet or more. Hold on, little guy. What do you think about a garter snake? Is this one we should yeah. keep on our property or kick it off? Keep it or kick it? Keep it. Keep it? Why would we keep it? Does it do anything good? Does it eat anyone we don't like? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So this one will take care of a variety of smaller things. Um, it will eat some friendly guys too, like lizards or frogs, but it'll take care of some guys we don't like too. And uh, does it really pose a threat to any of our animals? Is this going to attack your chicken? No. No. No, you know, no. <laughs> That's too little. Right. Now, if we had a pond, maybe if you got a goldfish pond with some little goldfish in or something like that, these guys are semi-aquatic like a lot of snakes. They will swim right in there and they would gobble them up and eat them. So that's one thing to consider is that you, uh, you know, you may not want garter snakes around just eating up your pet fish out in the pond and stuff. We don't have anything like that going right now. So uh, definitely perfectly fine to have on our property. You said it's a keeper? Sweet Pepper says it's a keeper. We're going to keep it. All right, fourth species. We're moving up a little bit bigger. This is a black rat snake, right? Yeah. What do you think? Is this a keeper or a kicker? Should we keep it on our property or kick it off? Kick it off. Kick it off? Why would you kick a nice, big, beautiful snake like this off our property? Because it eats our quail. It can eat our quail. We've definitely caught them doing that. And uh, in the future, I am doing a quail cage rebuild. I'll go into depth what I'm changing and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So quail, sure, it could eat the quail. What else could it do? It could eat our chicken eggs. Eat our chicken eggs? Have they ever done that? Yeah. yeah. It's happened. It's happened here. Anything else? Even though they can eat rats, we don't want to kick them off because they eat some of our animals. Yeah, so even though they do eat rats and they can help with the rodent population, um, they do eat duck, quail, uh, well the duck eggs, the guinea eggs, the chicken eggs, they can eat all of those. They have been known to attack our quail. They could eat baby rabbits and then also um, there's some wild bird nests around here, and we often have a lot of them. These guys are very arboreal, it means they'll climb up in the trees, and they will eat those baby birds too, or the eggs up in there like nothing. So the black rat snake is one that we like to give a ride to. We like to take it for a ride, relocate it somewhere in the wild, far enough away from our land that we don't think it's going to come back, and then we'll see what happens, right? Let's show how big this one is quick. Lean back and hold her out. Whoa, look at that guys. Can you even get that on the screen? That's quite a snake. And this is the official longest snake in North America. Um, these guys can get over eight feet long. Very cool. And uh, we'll be kicking it off the property today. So snake species number five today looks a lot like the red-bellied snake from above. 
but this is actually a brown snake and the easiest way to tell them apart is flip them over. I may do a video about just kind of differentiating. Oh, and it's very flattened right now. This snake's got such a beautiful pattern for a little snake, especially because it's just made up out of browns, but a very kind of cream, white, light pattern on the belly or a coloration on the belly. And um, this is also known as decay snake. Okay, I know that there is a brown snake down in Australia. This is not that snake. This is not the big venomous one down in Australia. So, a decay snake, a brown snake, is that one we should keep on our property or kick off? Keep it or kick it? Wow. Keep it. Keep it. Why would you keep a snake like that? Because <laughs> he can't eat any of our animals and he'll eat, um, he'll eat our bugs and stuff, kind of like the other little snakes that we're going to keep. And uh, one of the main things that these guys like to eat is, again, slugs in the garden. So very excited to have snakes around that are going to cut down on garden pest control, um, part of our organic garden pest control posse. I'm actually going to release this one in some of the rock structures in uh, the raised beds by the garden. So, oh, and I don't know if he'll do it, but it was just defensive a second ago. Oh, <laughs> did you see that? Oh! <laughs> He just tried to bite my giant finger. How about a little pinky? So this is one, you know, if the guineas find it or the chickens find it or the ducks find it, what are they gonna do to it? Eat it. They will eat it, but it's not gonna eat any of our animals. It's not gonna pose a threat to any of the ones we have here. So this little decay snake is one we are definitely going to be keeping, letting go on our property. Yeah. Whoa, What's careful that? bugger. Careful bugger, it's a biter. Yeah. So this one, Whoa, I don't know if you can see that. They are a very defensive snake. And they are one of the water snakes that we can find in a number of places around here. And um, this one, probably a northern water snake. nice water snakes that are going to be um, non-venomous. So what do you think? Is this one we should keep on our property or kick it off? Keep it or kick it? Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think? Keep it. You think keep it? Well where would it live on our property? Mm -hmm. Which pond or lake or stream? Do we have any of those on our property? Yeah. No. So this is the one we're actually going to kick off of our property simply because it'll find a better habitat. They, they do cross through here periodically. You can find them in ponds in the middle of farmers' fields. You know, they got there somehow. So they can leave their other um, locations to go find a new one. Very beautiful snake though. And uh, we'll let it go down at the lake. It'll eat a lot of fish. It'll eat frogs. It'll eat other things like that. And it, like I said, these guys, if you encounter them in the wild, most likely they're just going to zoom away and take off. But if you confront them or try to grab them, a lot of times they'll grab you right back with their open mouth. So simply because it's a water snake and we have no habitat here, 
um, we're going to let it go. And then if we do put a habitat here, we're gonna have fish and stuff that we want in it. So it would also not be a good fit for our property in that case. So the last snake for this video, I'm gonna do by myself over here because it is a copperhead. And this is one of the North American pit vipers. This is one of the venomous ones. This is probably going to be the most common venomous snake we ever find on our land. Um, water moccasins don't really have a high probability of being here. We haven't seen any of the larger rattlesnakes in the area. Supposedly coral snakes are in the state, but not really in this area. And those are few and far between. And then the pygmy rattlers, we've seen very near, but we haven't found any actually on our property yet. So the copperhead, would be one that we keep or we kick, kids. What do you think? Kick. Keep it or kick it? Kick it. Kick it. Why would we kick it? Because it can um, hurt us and it can hurt our animals if our animals get bit by it. Sure. Yeah. So guys, this is one that can pose a threat to my family. This is one that can pose a threat to my animals. Even the animals that it can't eat, if the animals scare it and it feels that my dogs are a threat, my sheep are a threat, my goats are a threat, you know, anything's walking around too close to it, it can bite it and cause them some serious issues too. So this copperhead, is going to get kicked. Uh, a lot of people do kill them. Um, technically that's illegal in some areas, including in mine, unless it's proposing like an immediate, you know, like it's life or death situation, which it's usually not gonna be, simply because um, in the moment that you encounter a snake, you're either gonna see it first and be able to avoid it, or you're not gonna see it first and it's gonna bite you. So um, we're just gonna relocate it, let it live a life somewhere else. But Copperhead is getting kicked. All right guys, so from my video last time, the correct answers were my top three garden plants are Malabar spinach, snake gourds, and um, Chinese red noodle beans. The two animals I thought might be messing with my uh, garden would be a squirrel or more likely an armadillo. Uh, the toothache plant was the plant that reseeded itself, the flower that was doing really well. And then um, I had gone up to Wisconsin. So if you got those four answers right for the trivia, you were in the running for a shout out in this video. The shout out in this video goes to April Martin. April Martin, you're the big winner. All right, guys, hopefully that was beneficial for some of you, giving you a look at some of the different snakes in our area that may also be in your area. Things to consider as you're out and about, as you encounter um, different animals in the wild, especially snakes. There's some that are perfectly fine to have around that aren't really gonna pose a threat that are actually gonna be beneficial. And there's others that you may just wanna kick out of your area. Um, if we round up a couple more species in the near future, we'll do another video, do like a part two of this, but that is that. So the trivia for this video, one of the easiest ways to tell the difference between a brown snake and a red bellied snake is what? Question number two, what was the only venomous snake that we showed in this video? Question number three, what was the largest snake that we showed in this video? And question number four, if you look at the snakes that we had, were the majority of them keepers or were the majority of them kickers, according to us? You guys are free to make your own choices, but according to us, were most of them keepers or most of them kickers? If you know the answers to those four questions, leave them in the comment below. I'll be choosing one person to give a shout out to in an upcoming video. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully it was uh, beneficial and educational for you. I know my kids learned a couple different things. I had fun sharing some information with them and hopefully it blesses you. Papa out.
always, I'm Papa Pepper, and I'd like to remind you, don't post for free. If you'd like to be part of a revolution in social media, an economic power to the people where users can actually blog for cryptocurrency, then I'd recommend that you check out steamit.com and join the revolution. Pop out.